What was, I mean, were you surprised? Did you know Tuck was pushing to get back? Or what was just your reaction knowing he was going to be out there today? He, he got on the ice a few days ago, and as we, as we always uh, never know what to expect once the player gets on the ice from a timetable or how they're going to feel. Uh, and he's felt uh, good since day one, which means he's tolerated progressive push uh, from day one. And today was another push, obviously, integrating back into practice uh, that wasn't uh, you know, a full goal practice. It was a post-game skate from, from last night. But um, I'll have a conversation with him now. <laughs> Signs are really good. So um, we'll see what that means uh, in relation to tomorrow. But uh, it absolutely is um, looking like it's it's um, going to be fairly soon, if not tomorrow. How big of a lift is that considering he is injury, Karen's injury, you know, Dolly's day to day, to have a guy like that with that influence back in the room? Yeah, he is, he is a very big influence. Uh, he's grown to that. I mean, even from uh, the start of the year, um, the last 30 games he's had have probably been some of the best 30 of his career. Uh, and I think everybody's become aware of it that's watched us play, including us on the bench, the players, his teammates, his line mates. He's just elevated. Uh, and by virtue of elevating, he's elevated us. Um, uh, and that's, that's what we had hoped for um, out of him, uh, embracing that challenge. So he was a big loss because he was playing so well. Uh, you know, when he got hurt, and um, obviously the results aren't what we wanted since he's been out. So having him back um, is significant. You, you only concern is making sure he, he's, I mean, he left at such a high, high level. Um, it's, it's unfair to, you know, as he, if he comes back earlier than later, it's going to be tough to get to that high, high level um, on fewer practices and fewer, you know, reps. But, um, but he's a he's an incredible athlete, so you know we're gauging when when's the right time for him that he's comfortable and we're comfortable putting him in. But it's it'll be a boost when he's in there, uh, especially now that you know Samuelson's going to be out for a bit, uh, and Darlene is is uh, is day to day right now. So um, that's two big big holes when you lose those guys. Obviously, you know Tuck coming if Tuck comes back, that would be significant. But those are two two big holes too. Now, both those defensemen who finished the game yesterday it just was something that maybe after the game it just started getting worse and worse on them. Yeah, it, it, it well, obviously didn't happen the last shift of the game, but some of these cases uh, you you can get through the game on adrenaline and not know that there's something wrong um, or the, a significance of what's wrong. These guys are competitive guys so they just they you know they just play right through and I say that that's not uncommon through the whole league where the injury flares up worse um, you know after uh, in, in the next morning and the body whatever stiffens up tightens up whatever it may be so so they they definitely didn't do it the last shift of the game they played through it and um, it's just the way it is but you're gonna certainly need a call up for the trip right Case. Well, being in Toronto and being that close, we'll see. Um, you know, we had six out there today that uh, that are healthy and look ready to go. So those are the six that we're going to go with. Uh, you know, if Darlene is not not going, um, Darlene being seven at this point, uh, day to day. So uh, as we go into the trip, if things don't change, yes. Comrie and Samuelson initially obviously listed week to week. Do you have any concern that, that we won't see them the rest of the season? I think we'll see them. Um, obviously, there's a concern when they're out, but the reports that we have, we should see them before that. Did Eric get hurt in the game? No. No. As far as Alex goes, you know, we see the stats and everything, but what do you miss with not having his personality around as much, not on the bench during games? I mean, that, that has to be you know, a noticeable thing. Yeah, and, and Paul, it was practice. He got hurt. So okay. practice for Comrie. He got hurt. Um, yeah, Tuck, uh, again, he, 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 you know, he left with this injury playing 
the best he's played, like I said, the 30 games prior, 25 games prior, statistically, but even just you know by the by the eye and by the impact, it was significant. So um, it was a downer because you, you you're not losing a guy, you're losing a guy that's 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 playing at such a high high level, and the team knows that, feels that. So, and yes, on the personality side. Uh, he, he brings a lot of personality, uh, and, you know, he's a guy that's somewhat come in from the outside. And what I mean by that is he gained a lot of experience not in Buffalo as, in, you know, with another organization coming in. And so, you know, players, you know, we've got a lot of young players that have just been in Sabres, and, and they're growing. And, and have him come in with some hindsight playing in playoffs and playing in big games uh, yeah, he has a presence uh, for us in, in the locker room and in, within games. How tough has it been to see Eric Comrie go through what he's gone through this year injury-wise? And you know, obviously the game the other night was out of his control, but just it seems like a lot of stuff out of his control has gone against him. And I know he's well liked. Yeah, it, you're totally right, Matthew. There's a lot of stuff, unfortunately, uh, that has been impacted him in potentially or in challenging ways uh, that have been out of his control. Um, the game, uh, a couple of injuries. He hasn't had injuries in his career, really, uh, until this season. Um, and I would say with him, he finds a way. Everything is, is fuel for him. He finds a way to, to, to uh, uh, not only overcome, but finds a way to be, become better because of things. Uh, just his, his attention to detail and work and commitment. Um, and he is he is really loved by his teammates and he he has a deep care for the, you know his team his teammates and he works for them hard so it was a very difficult night the other night um, I think for uh, obviously for him but I think the the guys I mean he, he came in in that game the first thing he did was try to apologize to his teammates and and it was you know, the, the room completely responded the other way obviously it was not his his doing he he had many great saves in the game um, we just didn't support him, and um, yeah, that was a that was a tough one. But um, you know, we I thought our players responded because of a guy like Comrie and because of the goaltenders to play and buckle down the way they did last night. And I think they uh, we understand the need to do that moving forward. Um, you know, not tomorrow, but make it a permanent um, concerted effort to uh, you know play the game the right way. As Thursday was in so many areas. I'm sure you watched yesterday again. You didn't win. You scored one goal. A lot didn't go your way. But how encouraging was that, especially given what it came right off of? Yeah, you know, you kick around a lot, you know, defense, and you got to defend, and you got to. I can tell you one thing: if you don't, and we, you've heard me say, if you don't know how to score in this league, you're going nowhere. Zero. You're, you're not going to get where you need to go. And we've worked on that, worked on that, worked on that. In the process, you know, even dating back to last year, I think the, the, the last game of the year we lost one nothing in Pittsburgh. And uh, we lost the game last year 6-1 in, in Edmonton. And I can remember that the Tuck Thompson line was minus five. And we lost 6-1. to one. If they were even, we would have won 2-1. And it was a hard matchup. And those players, the next morning, had a meeting with that line specifically, and we won one to nothing in Calgary in overtime the very next day within 24 hours so one night they don't defend and they're minus five and we lose a game six to two in Edmonton and the next night they constant turn their concentrate and focus to that we don't score a lot but we win in overtime one nothing so it's it's learning how to balance the two and you know when you look at the the, the teams that perform at the highest level they balance the two and, um, you know, I thought the other night that's what Dallas did extremely well. They defended, but they're a talented enough team to take advantage of the opportunity. It's there. They don't, they don't overextend for it. Um, and we are, you know, moving in that direction uh, bit by bit. And that's what experiencing the sting of that, you know, is, is, is part of unfortunate process. Um, and uh, I think, you know, we are, there's more on the line and there's more at stake now. And that will have a greater impact as a, as a result, and it, and it is. But you only scored one goal, but didn't you feel you produced the 
good offense in that game? There is no question we generated offense. But when you're focused and concentration, that's you, you sometimes can't let that go. And, you know, we're missing nets or we're hitting sticks or, you know, so the, the you're only going to get that when you have to – it, we'll get to a point where you don't have to concentrate as much on any area of the game. It's just second nature. That's when experience has sunk in. When when both ways, both sides of the puck, up and down the rink, everything is second nature. You don't have to consciously divert effort to defending and consciously divert, divert effort to trying to score and create scoring chances. It's just natural for you. And, and along the way of that process, those components are very conscious in a sport that goes like boom, boom, boom. There, you don't have, it's not a set play other than a, the first five seconds off a faceoff. Everything's read and react and learn, learn and see the situation, situational awareness. And you don't learn situational awareness in a video session or a, or a dry marker board. You, you've got to be immersed in it on the ice. And that is experience. That's gaining experience. And, you know, you bring it to the attention as we do and guys gain it more. Uh, but again, it's, it's bringing it f to the subliminal level, and that's a process, and it's frustrating as hell through that process because it's, you turn your attention to one component, and the other one is obviously going to fall off, and that's, that's true to the sport for the most part. I mean, there's so many details and intricacies of the sport situations that, yeah, if you focus on the power play, in the time you spend on that that you would have dedicated to some other area, that other area is probably going to fall because you've got five guys that need to interact together, and it's just the way hockey is, and every team is challenged with it. Uh, probably makes for more excitement and nerve-wracking games, but it's, it's the fact of it. You mentioned earlier this season that uh, developing offense is more difficult than developing defense, I think might have been the way you put it. Why do you think that is, and are you getting kind of to that? Oh, it's a hell of a lot easier to keep a team from scoring than it is to try to go score on them, as we saw last night. I mean, it just is. You just hunker right and you know they're bringing it to the net so if you put five guys in their way you just and you're willing to block a shot you're probably gonna you're probably gonna do okay and if you don't overextend and even go into the offensive zone you're probably gonna be able to limit it so you can limit it you know it's way easier to limit it than try to go through and create um, and you have to create without exposing you know lots of chances against us are not discerning of is this a good time to generate offense or are we overextending ourselves to act to create offense and that's that's part of growth too and and so you know if you just hunker back you're never going to play conservative no one's ever going to develop in the age in, in youth that we wanted to bring in the organization we have to develop so we can't just sit back and, and block shots all day long, or every, we're going to have 20 conservative guys that play not to make a mistake. Uh, and unfortunately, you make mistakes. You, the, 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 we've got to learn from the mistake. And so you actually have experience in hindsight. Um, so, um, yeah, it is, it is much more challenging to, to uh, develop offense because, again, you're going to be a little bit vulnerable in the process.